Let's have a little chat, shall we? So, as I always do, because I am the occult view, I was thinking about something. Was Rodney King an agent? Has anyone ever thought about that? Could Rodney King have been an agent for real, for real? An MK Ultra mind controlled agent. And the reason that I say that is because I was sitting down and that came to me. That thought came to me. I don't know why. Why would I think about Rodney King and the LA riots that took place in the early 90s? Oh, I know why I was thinking about it. Because I was having a conversation today with someone, with a friend of mine. And <clears throat> he's a lot younger than I am. You know, he's heterosexual. And I told him, I said, you know, back in the 1980s, and I'm only thinking of the culture at that time that I grew up in. I know everyone has their own different personal experiences or whatever the case may be. But back in the culture that I grew up in, in the 1980s, here in the DMV, black people and white people and Spanish people and Puerto Rican people Pretty much we all got along <clears throat> and it wasn't a pushed agenda to force us to like each other. It was genuine. It wasn't a pushed agenda to say that you have to like someone who did fucked up shit to you. It was genuine. We got along with each other, despite whatever, you know, differences that may have arise because of different cultures and conflicts or whatever the case may be. But we got along with each other and it wasn't based upon some agenda that was being pushed. It was based upon the fact that we all just got along. It wasn't based upon some perverse agenda to try to steal and suck the energy of black people. It, it, it was nothing, nothing of the sort. I'm only talking the 1980s because I was going back and, you know, let me say this. Sometimes in order to understand why you are at where you're at or to understand where you're at in general, sometimes you have to go back to where you came from. You have to go back and retrace your steps. And although I was a child in the 80s, I did recognize shit that was going on around me. And I was looking at old movies from the 1980s like Jason and, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street and shit like that. <clears throat> Excuse me, my sinuses are bothering me really badly. Tis the fucking season. And I was watching those older, you know, movies from the 80s and shit like that. And I was examining the energy of that time and the, inter and the interaction between blacks and whites or whatever the case may be. And I was saying, you know what? There was a little bit anyway of... I guess you can say unity between blacks and whites in the 80s. Of course, there were always, listen, there's always problems with racism and shit like that. I, I'm not denoting or, you know, denying that. This, is, this isn't about, let me say this as a disclaimer, this is not about singing Kumbaya and holding hands. It's not what this is about. I'm just examining energies. And I'm making a point. We got along with each other a lot better than we do now. 
So what happened from the 80s to the 90s? I'll tell you what happened. Agendas started being pushed. The greed of the 80s pushed out the agendas, the ritual greeds and the ritualizations of the 80s and the greed. Let me say it again. The greed of the 80s pushed out the agenda and the agendas for the 90s to water down our revolutionary motherfucking energy. Then in 19, when was it? Uh, was it in 1991 or 1992? Rodney King, well, let's back up for a minute before we even get into Rodney King. In 1988, we had the Central Park Five I believe, where those black men, along with the Puerto Rican guy, were accused of a crime that they did not commit, which we all know was which was the brutalization of a, a female jogger who happened to be white. And she was brutalized. She was raped and she was beaten. And those young men didn't do that. And this happened towards the end of the 80s. See, we were getting ready to go into another cycle, into another, yeah, another cycle. We was getting ready, we were getting ready to go into another cycle towards the end of the 80s because if I'm not mistaken, that happened either in 88 or 89. And let's see, let me do this. Give me a second. I'm doing some calculations. Y'all know I love to calculate shit. Okay. 1990 was a new cycle. That was a new. That was a new beginning. That was opening up a new gateway for new beginnings, new agendas, new world orders. Every nine years. Every nine years, we have a new beginning. A new world order, a new gateway for new beginnings every nine years. Nine is a very powerful symbolic number. I don't feel like getting it all into it right now, but, you know, nine is a powerful symbol. So 1988 was the end, was close towards the end of a cycle. So the ritualization and the sacrifice of those young men who did not commit that crime was necessary to birth this new beginning of the 90s. And then two, maybe maybe two, a year or two later, we get the whole fucking Rodney King thing. Rodney King gets pulled over by police and they beat the motherfucking shit out of him. And then he comes back and says, after he gets beaten brutally by these cops. And I'm not saying it was right. I'm not saying it was wrong. I'm giving my occult assessment. OK, it's not about right or wrong for me. I'm giving my occult assessment. There is no emotion in this. Not when I'm giving my occult assessment and they ask me personally, privately, I'll tell you what I think. But <clears throat> when it comes to this, emotion gets a back seat. Just wanted to say that. So then we, he, after he gets beaten by these police officers, he was nearly beaten to death. Then they had the L.A. riots after that. He comes back on camera and says those infamous, famous words after he was beaten by these police officers. And he says, can't we all just get along? Now, think about those words and think about where we're at now when it comes to 
niggas getting their motherfucking ass beat, not just by white people, but by multiple races. <coughs> Can't we all just get along? Now, remember, I told you at the beginning of this video that in the 80s, blacks, whites, and other ethnicities, we kind of got along with each other. But then they orchestrated that attack on Rodney King to destabilize the relationships between the races. And then Rodney King comes out and says, can't we all get along? Which watered down, bitched down the black man's revolutionary energy. Am I wrong? So my question remains, who the fuck was Rodney King really? And this ain't no disrespect to the man. This ain't no disrespect. But was Rodney King really a motherfucking agent to push out an agenda? To water down the black man's energy to protect himself to further emasculate the heterosexual black man because when people think about emasculation they oftentimes think about homosexuality but what happened to Rodney King and that entire thing that was emasculation right there and the reason I'm bringing it up is because everything is about occultism and magic that was a motherfucking spell that was a motherfucking spell that Rodney King put out when he said, can't we all just get along? Because what it did was it watered down that revolutionary energy. And basically it was programming black people to take a back seat to defending themselves against those types of attacks. What happened to Rodney King in the 1990s opened up the gateway. for everything we saw coming or everything that happened after that into the 2000s, many years into the 2000s. And then suffices to say, if I'm not mistaken, didn't Rodney King, didn't they found, find him drowned or something in his pool? Water, sacrifice, come on now, get into it. And I can clearly see what the fuck really happened to him, but I'm not going to get into it. I'm not going to say what really happened to him. I'm just going to say this. Water, sacrifice. Y'all put two and two together. But I see what happened to him. And it was a little bit more than, a, than drugs. See, I know why he was really killed. And that's why I'm saying... Was Rodney King really an agent that knew too much, that knew the agenda that was being pushed out, th that it would reach far into the future? Because when did he die? Let me see. Let me see. When did he die? He died in 2012, June 17th. And wasn't he messing around with white women too? He had been a user of PCP, okay? Now let me go and read some more. He was found underwater at the bottom of the swimming pool, of his swimming pool. And also, he died 28 years 
after his father did or something like that. I think I just read. I, I'm not certain. But there was a 28 year figure in there. Two plus eight is 10. Take away that zero. That's a new beginning. Rodney King was used to put out a new beginning. Because I'm going to tell you something, after that beating, after that happened in the 1990s, that is when you saw the watering down of the black heterosexual man's masculine image. That is when you begin to see little increments of changes in the energy of the heterosexual black man. Black men were no longer interested in being revolutionary after that. That's what I noticed. I noticed a definite change in the energy. So my question remains, was Rodney King really an agent? And we missed the entire motherfucking thing. Was he really an agent that was right up under our nose to push out an agenda so we could get along, but also not just get along, but also get our asses beat and also to disempower us and to destabilize us. Because see, that, that statement, that spell, can't we all just get along? That's exactly what it, what it was designed to do. To disempower us and to destabilize us and give others the grounds to abuse us, use our energy, and cast us the fuck aside. That is what that spell was designed for. Can't we all just get along? He was referring to black people getting along with people who mean us harm, not defending ourselves against them, but bowing down to them. And bowing down to their threats, bowing down to their attacks, not defending ourselves, not defending our energy with our magic, but bowing down to these People who want to harm us. That is what that spell was designed to do. Can't we all just get along? That was a spell. To implement mind control. To water us down emotionally, psychologically. And to make us docile. And weak. The golden child can bring her back. The golden child can bring your strength back. This is Sia Grant. Hit me up on Patreon if you need a consultation.